So if you if you have great physical, but you don't apply the force in the right place or at the right time, those things are significant. You're probably going to lose your dynamic posture. Yeah. So again, I, and, and the place to train all that is in the gym. It's not um, with the golf ball. So as soon as you put the golf ball there, there's a stimulus that's going to create, if you like, a neurological pathway and a reaction, yeah. and you're going to regress back to what you did. So yeah. you've got to break the cycle. So I'm, I am inherently came from the exercise science world. That's my background, right? So you add yeah. that with the golf machine and the sort of TPI piece. Now you've got the physical pieces that, go in together right yeah in the downswing i'm trying to apply so i've got got whatever the shot they're trying to hit i put them in the backswing so i go with what's the least invasive to the and which is the easiest well generally setups the least invasive maybe apart from the grip not everyone agrees on this but just from a practical standpoint dealing with yeah. like hacks and the fact that the downswings a quarter of a second relative to the backswing right so i'm trying to get everything in the backswing to influence the shot and then in the downs transition to downswing i'm trying to ensure they're applying the correct forces at the right place to be able to maintain their dynamic posture that's okay and be, and be powerful right so there's yeah. a combination of left right force in terms of push all forces just to clarify right Forces aren't rotary. Every force is a straight line. Torques are what create rotation. So if you have a force applied in line with a center of mass, you ain't going to create rotation. But if a force okay. is applied away from a center of mass, that creates a moment, the and moment then that, create, that creates a torque. So a lot of people talk about, well, linear force. Well, all forces are linear. Yeah. The rotary forces doesn't exist. It's called a torque. So, so it's yeah, talk just force, for but just context, for yeah. context. So yeah. in the downswing, I'm trying to manage their weighting, like energy back into the ground, right? So they can then jump up. How much they're moving from their, how much push there is from the trail to the lead, what you'd call that left-right horizontal force application. Yeah. How, how much they're pushing this way. Toes, feet are pushing forwards and backwards. One lead foot towards the target, trail foot away to create a force couple. And then how much they're pushing up out of the ground for that vertical force. The yep. blend of those forces is what's creating the pivot speed, right? So, so those things are huge. Then, then I'm trying to make sure that the club shaft, the handle, the head, the face – all of those things in the downswing support the shot at hand. So if it's depending on whether their body rotation, what they're trying to do, where's the mass, where's the face, you can play from way up, you can play from here. But yeah. it depends on how you release it, how you deliver it. Are you someone that pulls the club up and around the corner? Body's different like that. So that release is very significant. Are you someone that likes to feel this or feel this? So I'm trying to accommodate all of those pieces through the hit and none of them are, none of them are wrong, but that's yeah. a lot created with how they set up to the face. So all I'm right. trying to do in the downswing is blend the ground forces to match essentially dumb down their club kinetics. Yeah. Like that, that's, that's essentially all I'm really ever trying to do. And I, depending on the shot they want to hit. And so whilst that might sound complex, the reality is when you have that frame of reference, all you're doing is plugging in the components that they use, which is essentially what the golf machine was, but you, it's, it's just the, a way that you deliver it. But you never tell anyone all that. Like yeah, I exactly. Just, you, I use a whiteboard a lot, and I'll draw up, well, here's your setup, here's your backswing, your downswing, and your delivery. And I give them the ingredients that they need for them, but that's it. That's it. that's all. It never, it's never more than that. And then that's their framework, and then they build their pattern from that, and they have that to refer back to. And then, then it's like you create the drills for each of those different ingredients. That's it. So that that's your system that you tend that that you use to kind of make all your prescriptions, basically. Yeah, that's the framework I use. So. 
you know, when you say, well, your guys don't swing the same, well, they don't, but I can, every single one, I can give you the category of the pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so you have a blueprint for them to refer back to, which yeah. then makes life easier because when they're really good, you capture that pattern in 3D with, obviously, you know, all the data set with TrackMan or Quad, or if it's putting, Capto, Sam, right. and then you have that to go back to if they get a little bit off. So that's kind of the, that's what you're trying to do as you're running the checks and balances. That's, um, that's super important to obviously when, when players get off track of having a system and having check marks that they know where they play well from. Do you, do you think some players go out there sort of just kind of wing it <laughs> in, in terms uh, of when they start going bad, like they don't really know where they were or how to well, get back? Remember, remember the, the hard part, it feels not real, right? Yeah. So, players are really everything every all of us we're kind of subjective but tall players they know when it feels good and when it feels bad so you know tall players comment a lot of times well, i'm a feel player well i'm like i always kind of call bullshit on that because if you're yeah, a feel feel a feel player you know what you were doing when you were doing something wrong and you wouldn't need a coach so yeah. they have i think a better way to say it is they have incredible feel once they get a feel they ride it out. Yep. It's like it's momentum and they go with it and they go with it and they're really good. But invariably that that momentum is going to fade and they're going to run out. Well, if you've got no reference system to what that feel was, it's a dangerous thing because now you have nothing to refer back to. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so I think that the tour players are phenomenal at taking feels, thoughts, and ideas, visualization, and being able to apply them far better than we are as coaches. They just have a gift for doing it. But we, we as coaches, our job is to give them or extend that period and not make them understand and embrace kind of what it is they need to do for them to be successful, right? Yeah. Do you think with some of the, um, with some of the equipment and technology that we use today, do you think there's ways that sometimes um, the measurements are, 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 are an effect of what we do? Do you think some of the measurements that we get that we can actually kind of trick the system? Uh, what do you mean by that? Why trick let's the say, system? Well, if I was talking about, let's say, a, a force plate, is there a way, would you say that, like, I can put force into my trail side, right? And it, I could do it this way. But I also am curious if I could go this way and still sort of get the same reading amount okay, of force so, that uh, I put. So that's a great question. So now you're talking about, so if you're looking at, there's a difference there between pressure and force. So you could get, if you don't have the visual, the kinetics, but sorry, the kinematics of the kinetic, which is what's going on, yeah. you could really get messed up. So a lot of people look at a pressure trace and they'll tell you this is what's going on. Yeah. Well, if you've got no video to see it, you yeah. have no idea. Yeah, that's, that's where I mean. that's that's that pressure's dangerous. Now, for a force plate, that's not the same animal because you kind of look at the graph and it's like 3D. You can see in 3D with the graph shape when someone's basically turning off the ball, the club comes back and then it comes below, and that you can see what they do, right? You don't need the visual of the avatar. Yeah. You don't need the video in 3D because you have the graph. Force is the same. You've got the graph. Now you need it synced up, but you can tell when what someone's doing is assuming it's the graph is plotted correctly with address, top, impact, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That you can't necessarily trick the system now, but with pressure, you certainly can because you need the video to see it because all the pressure Matt's doing is telling you where there's more pressure. Well, if you lift your one foot up, all the pressure yeah. goes in the other spot. Yeah. And yada yada right so yeah you just have to know what you're looking at with the technology and that's the thing technology is all great it has a great application the body track sasha mckenzie and i have done a great education for them you go throw that in a bunker you can put it on a putting green those it's got fantastic application but it has limitations yeah the gasp system's phenomenal but i can't go throw it on the green or in a bunker so again it's but what you're trying to do with technology is know what is the benchmarking I need. And then you have that data set. And then, I mean, I don't, 
use TrackMan all the time on the PGA Tour. I have it out there. I might have it as a reference at times, but if I know when somebody's doing the right thing and the ball flight's what they want, you, you, the goal of the technology is to, is to help you. It's not to be a crutch. It's yeah. just a, okay, well, this is what produces this. Okay, what's happening? Okay, well, that's, if you stay within this range, you'll be pretty good. If you get outside of your range, that's not great. But invariably, people get outside their range when their yeah. pivot's off. Yeah. And, and remember, I said those guys have the best and girls have the best hands and arms. They can do anything with it within two or three shots. But if this is way off and then they're compensating long term, that's a bad thing. That's yeah. when they get into bad habits. And that's where technology can help you bring it back. That's pretty, <coughs> that was pretty awesome. I mean, that, that, was, that was a pretty awesome answer there in terms of that, that was always a question of mine with the technology. I'm like, can we trick these things? You know what I mean? I could, I could take a track, <coughs> not that I'm picking on track, man, but I can, I get the same reading, maybe making three different swings, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, remember, yeah. You, you, there's always a variance. And, and that's like when a player says, well, I did this and this still happened. I'm like, well, you have to be completely honest. Were you making a totally subconscious motion? Because remember, golf is subconscious and automated. Yeah. We can manip manipulate it. But then when the lights and the music go up and you're on the golf course and the pin's cut on the back right and you've got to hit the ball back there and the wind's off the right, I'll go, well, what are you going to do to make that happen? That's playing yeah. the game. That's golf. So I'm more interested in what happens in that environment. The track man and taking the track man on the course, you get some interesting readings, blah, 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 yeah. but, which I've done. Yeah. But you do all those things away so that when they go play, when they play, they can be artistic. They can be, yesterday, I think it was Seve's birthday. It was the day before. That maybe Seve's, but I can't remember what day it was, but he is the ultimate, just go play the game. He's an artist. And that's what the best players do. Tiger Woods does that. Yeah. I mean, he does it better than anybody. So you work on the skill away from the golf course, the technical, and then you go play the game. None of these machines have we been able to measure someone in, the, in tournament play. In tournament play, yeah. That's, uh, that, 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 so that's, until, we that's can do, until we can do that, it's, you know, all a little questionable. In my humble opinion. In your humble <laughs> Hey, could you do this just uh, real quick? You've been so gracious with your time. I can't thank you enough, Mark. Um, could we do something, or could you show us something that you would do possibly at home drill or with, you know, with your knowledge of, of the pressure and stuff and the forces? Um, could you give us a drill, like if we wanted to pick up speed? So, yeah, okay. So this is the easiest one, okay? Oh, I'm listening. If you want to, if you want to hit it, far further and faster i'm not going to go into the complexity of why right yeah. but but the faster you take the club back off of the ball the faster you're going to swing there ain't one long gone drive guy that swings slowly in the backswing the faster you come off the ball will create more unweighting more it'll do a lot of things listen we're not going to get into that now yeah, but yeah. That's the easiest way to no, – I'll give you two. Number one is faster backswing. Like okay. I'm saying way faster. So my buddy, Cordy Walker, that does um, golf science lab, he and Sasha and I were here in Birmingham, and he went from 112 to 119 in two swings just by swinging faster in the backswing. Now I've got force plates. It's kind of like a party trick for coaches who understand – Force, little hack, physics. Little hack. Yeah, yeah. Teaching hack here. So just as fast as you can. The other one would be the longer the arc, the more linear travel of the club inherently, you're going to create more force and speed. The question is, can you apply the force you create? Now, that's where things yeah. – but if you want to swing faster and longer – you just have to lengthen the lever, right? Make it longer. So then in the arc, so it's lift the front foot, bend the lead arm, stand up, create more unweighting while swinging really fast. You're going to hit it further. It's just physics. It's not like force is mass times acceleration. So you've got to accel to create more force. You've got to accelerate faster. Well, that's... Yeah. Right? And then you, to create more, it's got to be longer. Like it's not... 
If you apply simple like physics, it's not that hard. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, no kidding. But it's the, it's the real application of that. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Why does that happen? Well, there's a formula for it, but that you would never inherently think of that. And you, you'd never com- you wouldn't communicate that to a student. You're never going to tell them all that because it's too complicated. It's like, okay, right. we need to swing faster in the backswing. What do you mean I go and I get my tempo up? I'm like, your goal swing is an out of balance, in balance experience anyway. All that really matters is are you in balance at impact to deliver that? But that's if it. you look at all, all that, that's all that matters. So yeah. you can swing pretty and look pretty, but we're in a game of you got to smash it. George Gankus' guys smash it. Do yeah. they look like they're all perfectly balanced? No, they're out of balance, but really in balance and impact, and they deliver the club beautifully. Yeah. So that's a great tip there for everybody that's watching here. It might not necessarily be the straightest, right? But if you're just looking to – Oh, you didn't say anything about – you did right. not <laughs> say anything about hitting it straight. You said hitting it out. further. <laughs> I was putting out that disclaimer, folks. I was just saying, if you need to move that club faster to get the potential to hit it farther with hitting it in the middle of the face – you might want to try what Mark just said. <laughs> 100%. I mean, and honestly, the best way to hit it straight is centeredness of hit. There's no yes. substitute for impact location. So, again, you, you got yeah, you, you to throw, you throw that out. Hey, Mark, I can't think enough, but th- I know this is the first time we got to meet. Uh, it, was, it was virtually, but um, I can't thank you enough. Can you please let people know? Uh, I, I know that everybody already knows you. But if they wanted to find you or Instagram, just kind of put your plug in there, what you, what you do or where you're Sure, at. yeah. So you go to uh, – I'm on Instagram and I'm on Twitter. So at Blackburn Golf. So I'm pretty active on uh, Instagram, posting posts every week, uh, kind of do a regular Force Friday. Uh, I love some that. Stuff from stuff from the tour over the weekend. So you can check me out there. I also have an app in the App Store, yeah. at Black, the, the, Blackburn, the Blackburn Golf app. So if you go into the App Store – we basically have um, – it's a subscription program where you pay an annual it's $99 to just, just get the app unlimited. Yeah. Inside the app, there's probably like 300 videos. The pattern sort of if you want to draw it or fade it with the different variations I chatted about, that's all in there. We've got short game. We've got long game. We've got a lot of like different ways to hit different shots. And it's all powered by PDEV, which is our player development program, which is – you're going to see that roll out. We run a curriculum for clubs, but – Everything in there is designed from a player development standpoint to help you shoot lower scores. That yes, you can yes, you can create a great go- looking golf swing with all the ingredients, but it's all about ball control, score centric, shot centric. Like how do you do those things? And when you're learning, you kind of get swing centric first, where you're focused on the swing. Then you get skill centric, developing the skills with that swing. Then you get what I call shot centric, hitting different shots, and then you ultimately end up being score centric and that's kind of what we pride ourselves on uh brian speakman my partner and i he um he runs our academy with me so he, he and i that's our baby that's what we do so it's it's in the app store you can buy it and then inside that we do lessons like except stuff like that but if you want the meat and potatoes and the information there's also a really cool forum in there where okay. folks can we have a private forum so a lot of cool stuff behind the scenes from the pga tour that i wouldn't be able to post publicly post in there too so i love it i love it man um again i can't thank you enough thanks uh, for coming on live with larry if, if if you guys need to find me just find me at angeles national here in los angeles um but with that being said mark i can't thank you enough pal again and i look forward to seeing your force fridays on your instagram and uh, just hearing more about what you got to say because y- you're out there doing doing some phenomenal work with some phenomenal players and i respect that a lot and i respect you thank you so much you got it, man. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Stay safe during the COVID. Be safe. And I look forward to uh, seeing you. And you see my boy, Johnny Ortega, tell him I said hello. You got it, brother. Thanks, man. See you, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody, the JRL Golf Academy. Please make sure to link and comment down below. Make sure you subscribe and turn on that little bell for notifications. And we look forward to seeing you on the next JRL Golf Academy.